Empire. Welcome to another episode of College Park. This is Kevin McClinton, and I'm joined by my co-host, Darren McClinton. What's going on, D? Man, good to be back. Good to be back. A lot to talk about and a lot coming up. So. Yeah, there is. There's a lot we got going on today that we'll touch on. Uh, we're also going to be talking to Anthony Cowan, senior point guard and leader of the uh, ninth-ranked team in the country, University of Maryland Terrapins. So that'll be fun and kind of getting some ideas from him about this year's team and um, you know, talk to him a little bit about you know his decision to stay as opposed to going to the NFL, the NBA, and uh, also some of the players on his team that uh, are starting to step up a little bit this year. So right. um, I'll be interested to talk to him about that. But right now we got a we got a twenty and four team right now. We need to talk about man. What's your uh, how what's many your wins in a row is that? Was that seven? seven? I think it's seven. Seven. Man. We had talked about last the last show. We were talking about. The atmosphere going out out to Champaign, yeah, in Illinois, man, and it it was just as as advertised. It was, a, you know, the crowd was crazy. Yeah, that's a hard place to play, as is any home court in the Big Ten this year. But that was a hard place to play. It was a very good win, very good win for the Terps, man. I think it was the best win of the season, to be honest with you, because there have been a lot of doubt about them on the road and whether or not they could win a big game. And uh, you know, they got that win against Northwestern. Came back and uh, and got another big win on the road, uh, and then in this Illinois game was big for them. So and they were ranked. Illinois was ranked. So I think from that standpoint, this really was the best win for Maryland. Mm. Um, and I think it's going to give them a lot of confidence and uh, and swag going into the remaining part of this schedule. But I'm excited for them because I think they've uh, I think they've you know kind of hit their hit their mark or hit their uh, their stride right now, which is going to be very exciting to see come down the stretch. I tell you what, Turge went to a zone. And I, I hadn't seen it this year yet. And, and they say they, they work on it a lot in practice, mm-hmm. but they haven't really pulled it out in games much. They've they've done a little bit of three-quarter press. Right. I've seen that. But just flat-out zone. Right. And that kind of mixed Illinois up, man. It was like, you know, they were, they were shredding the man-to-man defense. Right. You know, and, and he changed it up. And they, they were down midway through the first half by as much as 14. Yeah. Yeah, and it's tough, especially when you're down 14 as a coach because when you go to a zone, you're like, mm-hmm. it's hard to change the defense because you want to get that original defense that you're coming out with. You want to kind of get it going. But to change the defense down 14, you're taking a risk, but it was a very good risk because Illinois did have a hard time. They didn't really get into their zone offense. Maryland extended yeah. it out really well. Um, and they were able to get some misses and get some uh, you know, get some some breakouts and – able to cut into that lead and eventually overcome that uh, that lead. So I thought that was a very good move by Turge. Yeah, it's 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 a risk, Kev, but I I like it because when your staple, you know, is is your man, that's what you rest on, your right. man-to-man defense, tough man-to-man. Right. And that's what the other team, you know, on their scout practice is is working against, right. you know. And when you hit them with a zone all of a sudden, it kind of throws them out of rhythm, you know. And, and Illinois coach was like, you know, it kind of threw us threw us for a loop. And with the way – with the three-point line being moved back a little bit mm-hmm. and the way teams across the country are shooting the, – the shooting percentage is, right. is dropping, you know, I I don't – I like it. I have no problem with it. You know, every once in a while throwing, throwing a zone in there just to mix things up a little bit. The only problem is Maryland's a very good rebounder team. And when you go zone, you know, you, you got to right. find a body. You right. got to box right. out. Right. You know, especially for teams that are very, very good on the offensive, offensive glass. So, And then on top of that is when you do run zone, you don't have as many zone offenses to run. Right. You know, you have a lot of man offenses that you can run based off how a team is playing you, but you don't have a lot of zone offenses. So that cuts your playbook in half. And now it forces you to kind of look at some things that you probably haven't practiced. And uh, and it showed because Illinois what, just couldn't get a good look. And then they got in foul trouble a little bit. So that, uh, that kind of added on to – you know what? You know Maryland's come back and what they were able to do. Down by fourteen, then Maryland went on a, a ferocious run to yeah. close that half. Right, they closed it to forty-two to forty going into the locker room. Right, on Wiggins' second three-pointer. Now I'm gonna tell you, 
That was we a big put, shot at the buzzer, too. We put a out a shot. missing report on Ayala, man. I think we found him. Yeah, we found him. I think we found him, right? Yeah, you know, somebody called in, said they found him. It were two plays that stood out to me, right? Ayala got the rebound, may have put the ball on the deck once, but he looked up, kind of like how Ken, Kendall Marshall used to mm-hmm. do. Head was up, looked up, found Wiggins running the wing, knocked down, splash, right? right? right. And then he did it again at the buzzer. Wiggins hit another one that gave him so much min- momentum going into the locker room, man. Th- those are the kind of plays. That along with Ayala hit a three. And I remember you had said in an earlier podcast that sometimes, you know, everybody knows that you're in a slump, right? Your team right. is your team's talking to you, trying to pick you up. Sometimes it's going to take a shot. Maybe it might go off the glass, and it didn't even mean to go off the Hit glass. The back of the rim, it just fell in. You I saw remember that, that, right? I remember so that. Ayala yeah. shot a three from the top of the key, and it kind of got wedged between the the, the and rim and the back, in. and it dropped in. Yeah. Right? He had the biggest smile on his face. Yeah. I'm like, wow, yeah. that might be what it is. So yeah. then after that, he makes another one, and then he makes another one. You know, and then going into the next game against Nebraska, you know, he was in rhythm again. So. Sometimes, yeah, it does take that, and we need him. Yeah. So I'm glad we found him. Yeah, you know what we, I mean? we need him definitely. And, um, you know, and that, and like I said, I think that game showed what kind of team Maryland can be. You know, we've been waiting Six and times waiting they've and come waiting. back from double, yeah. being down double figures. Yeah. Six times. Yeah. And that team gave them problems back here in College Park in December. You remember they almost, you know, Maryland almost lost to them. Absolutely. If it wasn't for a last second shot by Anthony. So uh, things are starting to kind of form as, into what Maryland is going to be, I think. And, you know, this seven-game winning streak, you can tell they're playing like the ninth-ranked team in the country. You know, and we have to – they we just have to continue to do what we're doing. Don't change anything. There's no reason to change right. anything. Sticks is playing phenomenal. Anthony's playing with a lot of swag and a lot of confidence. And the rest of the team is is also uh, is playing well. But, you know, with that Illinois game came the Nebraska game. Yeah. And, you know, you're following – you know, in Nebraska – a lot of people were talking about it was going to be a trap game because it's the big one was the big game. one Saturday night perfect against Michigan trap State. Game. So I was a little concerned about that, and it showed the way Maryland played early. You know, Nebraska kind of just wouldn't go away. And um, you know what I thought know, though? I thought it was I was, it was a trap game uh, for sure. Are they in last place? Yeah, they're in Either last. They, they, they uh, Northwestern lost, one lost one eight one in them. a row and sandwiched in between two you know, ranked teams, mm-hmm. big-time teams that are playing well at the top of the rankings. But I thought that the home court advantage was going to save them. I said, you know what? It, it, they, they get home where they haven't lost. It seems to be the toughest place in the country to play. You can't come into College Park and, and, and get a win. You never want to say you walk in and you're already up 15 because right. of the home court advantage or because the name across your, your jersey. But I was thinking – you know, it was just going to be overwhelming for Nebraska. They haven't won in a long time. You know, Fred Hoiberg has those guys. They're young. Right. You know, they only have a couple of seniors on right. that team. You know, that atmosphere might might do them in. But, man, they came in there ready to play, hoisting up a bunch of threes. They shot 33. Right. Luckily, they weren't going in. But right. it was seven for 33 from the behind the arc, man. But I'll tell you what Nebraska did a good job of. I mean, they did shoot 33s. But where they were getting Maryland were on – Maryland was on backdoor cuts. Absolutely. Because when you extend out and you know they can shoot, then you're going to extend out there. And then they were just going backdoor and they were hitting them for a couple backdoor layups, especially in the second half. Wide open. Wide open layups. Yeah. And so that was – now you're at Maryland, you're like, okay, well, they do – but they have backdoor cuts that they're using against us, but they're also shooting the three very well. So it kind of puts you in a little bit of a – some indecision about how you want to defend that. Do I go all the way out there or yeah. do I kind of stay in and – and uh, you know, and close out a little bit cautiously, so you don't really know. But Nebraska took and and give them credit; they have not they had nothing to lose. But they have a coach that coached in the NBA, yeah, coached at Iowa yeah. State for a long time, so he's got experience and he knows how to win. Uh, will get that team Maryland. turned around. Yeah, he will. But I tell will. you what, Turge, he was a little under the weather, and I heard him say after the game that uh, he it was his fault. He took a lot of it on his shoulders. He said. He, that he didn't have the guys prepared like he wish he should uh, wish he could have, and I heard he missed a, a day or two in practice because of practice. But I don't. I'm gonna tell you this because he was under the weather. I don't, and I don't. I'm not gonna put a lot of stock in that because it's, you know, that's uh, to me that's overrated as far yeah. as getting you ready to play because you're a should player. Be ready you should anyway. be ready yes. to play. You're right. Anytime you're playing against a Big Ten opponent, you should be ready to play. It doesn't matter if it's Michigan State. It doesn't matter if it's Northwestern. It doesn't matter who it is. When you have an opportunity, 
you got to be ready to play. So I understand what Turge is saying. He's trying to deflect a little bit of that on him, onto mm -hmm. him. But it's up to those guys to play, and they know what's at stake. I mean, this is a big year potentially for Maryland, and they need to uh, they need to treat it as such. I mean, they you know they they got away with one. They, they, they got escaped. away with they one. They did. Yeah. They, they, we escaped with a win, and it's easy to say that when at the end of the day, that's seven in a row. Right. You're what? What are they? Ten and three now. Ten and three. Yep. Ten and three in the conference, yep. sitting alone up top, yep. and you're twenty and four and ninth in the country. Yeah. Yeah, so it, I mean, there's if you're gonna if you're gonna learn something, you'd much rather learn from a win as opposed Steady to steady Eddie. Loss. Keep getting the W's. Right, sixteen times this year, a top five team in the country, sixteen times, yeah. has lost to an unranked team. Yeah, yeah, it just happened again. Louisville just lost to yeah. Uh, Georgia Tech. Yeah, yeah. So there's so much parity in college basketball. Hey. We've talked about it, and it makes it fun, you know. But also. You at you know at Maryland University of Maryland knows they have a chance. Yeah, stay you in the conversation. Right Maryland there. is definitely in the conversation. Yeah, yeah. you know we'll uh, we'll see because we've got a lot more to talk about with uh, Michigan State coming up, and uh, we've also got a very special guest coming up in the next segment. We have Anthony Cowan, Maryland point guard and uh, leader and captain of that team, and one of the best players right now in the country. So it'll be interesting to talk to him about what he sees with uh, Maryland moving forward. So we'll, uh, we'll get to Anthony when we come back. Plays your position. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Hey. What's up, what's up? And what's going on, man? It's Kevin. How you? Now I'm not chilling. How you? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing okay. How you feeling? I'm good. Thank you, man. Okay. Tell me a little bit about, you know, what the mindset is right now as far as how you guys are approaching each game. How how do you guys coming out and being able to uh uh to get off to these uh these good starts and, and being able to uh to play the way you're playing right now? Yeah, no, our mindset has always been the same. Um, just trying to get better every day. Um, I mean, obviously we, we're going through a little winning streak right now, um, but we know still we still got a lot more work to do. So that's just our our mindset, really. Just 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 keep working and take it day by day, um, and staying with it. Hey, Ant, I I know last year when Sticks was a freshman, there was some a couple of times when you you be went, wanting that alley you play, and he was either he wasn't ready to catch it or you know, the timing was off. And I see this year, you know, it, it's just like clockwork, man. You guys are on the same page. And I know that takes time. But talk a little bit about how your your relationship with uh, Sticks has grown and how y'all have been able to come become an inside-outside, you know, dynamic combination. Right. No, I mean, after last season, um, me and him, we just realized that me and him had to build that chemistry back together. Obviously, yeah. uh, Bruno was leaving, so he kind of had to step into that that role. Um, so, I mean, that that chemistry started back up. I just playing pick up with one another almost every day. We on the same team. Us playing one on one every day. Just just little things just to help the chemistry out. Yeah, it's important. Um, and obviously, it's 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 been getting better um, throughout the year. Um, just, just exactly with the example you came in, just in terms of the lobs, just knowing when I'm throwing it or, or when it's open. Uh, I think me and him got a really good connection at that. Um, and hopefully, it can, it can only get better. Absolutely. And let me ask you about Eric Ayala. Uh, I know he had was going through a little stretch there where he wasn't shooting the ball well, and uh, you know you could kind of see it that he was. You know, it's when you're struggling as a basketball player, sometimes it's very hard to get back on track. And I remember when I played. When I had bad games, I would have a teammate that would come over and just kind of give you a little bit of confidence and motivation. Was there anything you guys said to Eric as far as trying to get him through that little stretch where, you know, maybe he lost a little bit of confidence? Because I know you guys, you know, expect a lot from him. He's a big part of the team. And because these last two games, he's been playing really well. Right. No, it was all collectively uh, from, the, from, his, from his teammates, from the coaches, from to myself. Um, just telling him to make sure that we, he know that – that we, he knows that we still have the utmost confidence in him. Um, and every time he's open, uh, with any any means, we want him to shoot the ball. So um, he realized that. Um, he came back. He had a big game against Illinois on the road. That was huge. Um, he was able to hit some big shots in the second half. 
Um, yeah, obviously in that last game against Nebraska, he was I think he was like four for six from three. So yeah. um, hopefully he get he's getting his back as groove. But just letting them know that we all had the utmost confidence in him and and we want him taking those shots. So um, I think when he when he realized that, uh, I think it took a little pressure off him. Yeah, it's key to play loose and and know that everybody has your back with, with going through slumps and everything like that to still stay calm, cool, and collected because, you know, the shot's going to fall. The shot is going to fall, and y'all are going to need that. That's good, man. Exactly. Exactly. Tell me about uh, about Shaw Mariel. I know he's, um, you know, he hasn't played much, but, you know, I said earlier today that I thought he was going to be a difference maker for you guys coming down the stretch because you just don't have many seven-foot-two guys walking around um, and he's a good player. I know he's been struggling with injuries, and you're trying to get him back into shape. But I think he can be a difference maker for you guys. Uh, where do you all see him right now? What do you? What kind of impact do you think he can have for you guys coming down the stretch here? Right, someone that can just help us protect the rim, uh, especially on the defensive end, just take up a lot of space. Um, and then the offensive end, uh, just getting put back. Um, screening. I mean, just a little thing. Um, obviously, we don't need him to come out and try to score 20 a game or anything, but just the way he can protect the rim um, defensively, um, be ready for putback, just be that big body in the lane that people see when they drive. I mean, that's going to that's gonna mess up anybody. You see a 7-3 dude sitting in the paint. So, um, I mean, he, just different ways. I, mean, I think everybody's just finding their role now, and I think he's found his, especially on the defensive end. And I know that you, you know, we talk all the time, and we, and I know you're still, you're grounded and you're focused, and you know, you're, you're really concentrating on on having a great senior year to top off this career that you've had. That's that's been phenomenal. Um, and I want to congratulate you first. You you reach a milestone after milestone, and. Uh, it seems like every every game they're pulling up something else that somebody else that you passed a le- the legend on on the Maryland's list. And how do you stay focused? How important is that for you to just stay grounded, stay focused, and and keep your eye on 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 the on the goal? Right, something that my um, that my dad always told me that that stuck with me, especially when I was younger. Um, he's always told me that point guards are judged on how much they how much they win, not necessarily how much they score individually or what they do individually. So. That always kind of stuck with me. Um, obviously, coming coming here, I wanted to be the best I could be um, in the point guard. And you look at all the great point guards that came here, um, they won. So that's something that I, that I also want to do. Um, all the all the accolades and the records, that's that's cool to know. It's something that I always dreamed of as a kid. But if you look out, if you look at throughout throughout my career, um, through AAU, the high school, um, I won. Um, and yeah. I, yes, you did. My one. Yeah, in college that's a, that's another that's a big huge goal of mine. Um and just know I can I'm only the only way I can do that is by staying focused and staying grounded. So um just realizing I got a lot more work to do. So yeah. well, I'm gonna tell you this, man, I've been I've been really impressed and I know I texted you the other day, I've been really impressed with how you've matured and how you've really taken on that leadership responsibility because it's hard, man. It's hard being a point guard, but then also being a senior and having all of that responsibility on you. I mean, I did it when I was at Maryland being a senior point guard, and uh, that's tough to do because you have to really pick your spots because you know you have to facilitate. You know you have to uh, really set guys up and try to get them uh, to be successful. But then at the end of the day, you also have to do what you do, and, and you've done a great job of that. And I think it's just the game has slowed down for you a lot. Was there anything as far as going into this year? What did you expect? What did Anthony Cowan expect from Anthony Cowan? Like, what did you expect from yourself going into this year? Right. Um, I think I expected to do exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, just leading my team, um, making sure we win at a high level, making sure we playing at a high level. Um, that's exactly what I, I came in doing. And, uh, I think my work in the offseason kind of showed off in, in terms of just trying to get my body right in terms of being able to take them bumps and being able to play a little bigger, being able to finish a little better. Um, I can still shoot the ball um, a lot better than I thought I would, um, but that's still a lot more basketball to go. But other than that, I'm, I'm doing exactly what, what I set out to do. Um, so my team went at a high level. Um, and be that, Like you said, just be that leader on the floor. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. So I just got to, like I said, like I, keep, like I keep saying, it's still a lot more work to do, but um, – I'm doing what I set out to do for right now. Well, you guys got a big one on Saturday. 
Um, you know, I know the Nebraska game, and a lot of people are saying that was that was a trap game, and you know, you guys were coming off a big game, big game against Illinois, and you know, you had Nebraska in there, and you know, you can't, you know, anytime you're in conference play, you got to take everybody seriously, and I thought you guys did a good job of figuring it out at the end, but now you got a big one on Saturday, and you know, two of the top point guards, and not in the Big Ten, but in the country, are going to be going head to head. How do you see that matchup, man? I mean, Michigan State's kind of been a thorn in our side for so many years now, and you guys, you know, you guys are there, man. You're ninth in the country, and you got a chance to knock off these uh, Michigan State. And and um, how do you guys see? How do you see that game un- unfolding on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be a comparison if, if I didn't say it's a final win. I mean, yeah, we're going in there, we know it's going to be a real hostile environment. Uh, I think I think they just said it as college game day. Yeah, so I know they're going to have all the all the extra answers and stuff like up or whatever, but no, we just go in there overly focused. Um, we just came off a really good practice, just getting ready. Um, we just going there, going there ready to compete, um, ready to get ready to play. Yeah, and I know you guys are going to be prepared, man. You know Cassius, Cassius knows you, and, uh, you, you know, both teams know each other, both coaches know each other. Yeah, it's going to be a good clash, man. I'm, I'm excited to see it. Turp Nation is behind you guys. I know that. Right. Yeah, for sure. Now they definitely have. I, it's been it's been crazy how the attendance has been our home games and how the students come back and fill the fill the wall and fill the whole building out. So it's been great support. So we trying to we trying to go there Saturday and one more for one more for Turf Nation. So listen, man. I mean, you've uh, you've you've done it, man. You've proven to be a really really good player over the four years that you've been at Maryland, man. I bet it's been a been a pleasure and a joy to watch you play, man. But I know you guys got a lot more work to do, and hopefully we'll be having this conversation right after the uh, the NCAA championship game, man, when you guys are champions. So just keep doing what you're doing, man. And, you know, you got everybody behind you, and let's get that game on. Let's get that win on Saturday. Yep, for sure. Yeah, I got you. Appreciate the call in. Yeah, of course. No problem. No problem at all, man. Appreciate you, Ant. Have a good one. Yeah, that's the best. I'll right. holler at you, Clint. All right. Good stuff, man. That was uh, that was some good stuff from Anthony. We uh, yeah, I mean, the young fella's grown up a lot, man. Over the last four years, it's been it's been uh, good watching him uh, from coming in as a highly touted uh, freshman coming out of St. John's and playing behind, or learn not not playing behind, but he's playing alongside and learning from Melo Trimble. Yeah, you know, it gave him a good break into college, big time college basketball. And to see him mature from year to year, and I and I know he really really appreciates the conversations from yourself, Walt Williams, you know, other guys that have done it before right. him, and, and and that are guiding him because it's it's tough to be Merlin's point guard. It yeah, is, you it know, is. it's a lot on it's a lot on you guys' shoulders, man. And uh, you know, he's handling it well. Um, but you got to take a lot of lot of credit, Darren. I mean, I know you you're gonna you're, you're gonna be humble about it, but I mean, you working with Anthony for the last three, four years or however long it's been, um, getting them in the gym and training them and all those types of things. So I know you feel good about where he is because you've had a lot to do with that. And uh, Yeah, you know. our relationship is good. It goes back far. And I I coached against him coming up, so he was he was the enemy, you know, in his D.C. assault days. But, um, yeah, we've been, we've been working. I've kind of tried to help him with uh, not only just his skill set but his mindset. You know wh- what it, how to pick your spots, how to be a lead right. guard, as well as a point guard. You know, it's, it, those are those are two different things. Let you me, know. Let me ask you this: Do you think? And I know you've had a lot of conversations with him. How do you think he felt about coming back instead of going to the pros? Do you think was that a conversation that you guys had? Was that um, you know something that you guys discussed? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Do you think he's comfortable coming back or how do you how do you feel about that yeah i think he's very comfortable with the decision um it was it was anthony it was his dad it was coach turgeon and the staff you know they they, he wanted to test the waters and see where he was see how nba personnel as well as uh general managers and and scouts uh, felt about him see where he was right and then you get you get a chance to do that work out for a few teams get really positive and negative feedback right 
and, and, and see where you are. Right. And then you can take that into your senior year, make those improvements and adjustments and, and, and try it again after, you know, finishing and closing the book on your on your college career. Yeah, I, I, I think he's, he's very comfortable with the decision. And I think uh, the people around uh, College Park are comfortable with it as well. Yeah, I, I, I made the comment before about players coming back. And I think sometimes people think if you don't, if you try the waters or you test the waters mm-hmm. in the NBA and you come back, then you're a failure, you know? And I think that a lot of times people think that, oh, like he wasn't ready. Sometimes you just have to have an idea and be really be realistic about your game, about where you are. And there's nothing wrong with coming back. There's nothing wrong with getting better at the college level to get yourself ready for the NBA. A thousand percent. You know what I mean? And, I, you know, Sticks did it, um, you know, and there's a lot of good players that made that decision to come back and they're, you know, they're they're reaping the benefits of it. So I think that was a great decision Anthony made. I think it was one that needed to be made. And, you know, he's one of the best players in the country. And let, let me let's be real about it. Okay, and, that's um, a great that's a yeah. great point. And just think, these are the most fun years of your life. Yeah. You know, you're playing Big Ten basketball, you know, high level at the highest level. Absolutely. At this stage. And you're the starting point guard. Why not continue to write your story? Absolutely. Why not? Right. You know, you 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 can't get these years back. You know, and 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 like we said when in the interview, he's passing milestone after milestone after milestone. A lot yeah, of he people passed me a couple of weeks ago in this <laughs> yeah. list. So. <laughs> so a lot of people don't get to do this if they don't stay all four years. Right. These are things that you know he'll have little little uh, trophies and 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 plaques and things like that that he can you know, put up in his basement one day of accomplishments that you get when you stay, when you stay all four, yeah. you get when you come back, you know, you go see what it is and you come back and then you finish your story. I like it. I think a decision that you really have to think about is if you want to be an NBA player, do you want to be there for a long period of time or you just want to be there for the, you know, for the immediate time? So what I mean by that is going back to college, playing, getting better, you might have a longer career, you know, as opposed to going out when people say, oh, man, you need to come out. You ready, man. Don't go back to school. Come out there. Let's get your money or whatever. And then you go, you know, you go into the NBA. You might not be ready. You might be ready, but you might not have you might not have much of an impact as you would if you had stayed in the in the uh, in the microwave yeah, or the and oven, as we and say. That's, man. It's way more important for a guard, especially a point guard especially a smaller guard. Right. You know what I mean? Bigs, they, they can take the time to, to wait for them to develop right. because you can't teach size. Right. But the game is so guard-oriented now on the professional level. Absolutely. If you don't, if you don't have all the boxes checked, right. you know, you, you can find a hard time when you get up there in three letters. So Absolutely. So I, I, I'm a fan of it, and, and you know, I know, that, I know college basketball's fan base is, is a fan of, you know, you get to see Cassius Winston – Against Anthony Cowan, two four-year point guards right. battle this this week. Well, it's college game day. Don't yeah. get any better than that. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. We got Big Michigan game. State coming up, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It, listen, it, it, this time <laughs> man, of year, man, it gets man. no better than this. It gets no better. They called college game day, right? Yeah. Everybody's gonna be in, in, in uh, with East Lansing. That's yep. what it is, East yep. Lansing. Yep. And you know, this, these are two senior point guards going at each other. Right, Michigan State is coming off a nail biter win over Illinois. Maryland's coming off a big win over Illinois, and a nail a nail biter against Nebraska. Right, yeah. so mm. you know it, it, it's I, it's you prime what, to be. <laughs> what you think? I, li- I mean, you got to love these games. Yeah, dude. it's what you live for. You know what I mean? When when I was in school, when 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 the Blue Devils came in town. When the Tar Heels came in town, mm-hmm. or when you went, it was just that's what you play college basketball for. You know what I mean? And you know, I don't, I don't. I think now that we've finally wrapped our brain around the fact that Maryland's in the Big Ten, and we've been waiting and waiting to feel that impact of being in the Big Ten and not in the ACC anymore. This feels like okay, we're a part of the Big Ten. This feel, this game feels like it because. You have a good team. Maryland has a good team. Michigan State has been top dog in the Big Ten for years. Mm-hmm. They are the they're they're the measuring stick. You know they're the standard of the Big Ten. 
They got probably the best coach in the Big Ten, you know, best program in the Big Ten. At least that's the way it's been for the last five. This is a time to slay the dragon. This is a time to come into East Lansing and beat them, you know, and just, you know, all those demons and all that. We have a chance to do that. You got to love it, man. You have to yeah. love this game, yeah. man. It's just this is what you play for. This, and this is what Anthony was talking about. He wouldn't be a competitor if he didn't embrace this challenge. And, you know, that's what uh, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, he said I, I hope Turge is, is back to feeling uh, good again. Yeah. You know, he's been I think he'll have prepared, though. I think he'll have prepared. Anthony just said they came off of a very good practice. I know, I mean, it's, it's time to get focused. Time to get ready. Like you said, when you go on the road, this you, all you have are your guys. I know it's going to be a lot of Turk fans right. there. They're, they're going to travel with the team. It's a big game. But these players, they're going to get in that hotel. They're going to come together just like they did a few games ago in that locker room at halftime. Yeah. They're going to come together. They know They know the 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 the, the nature of this game. They yeah. know th- this is those mo- these are those moments that you go to school for. Usually when, when a player says they have they had a good practice right before a big game, it's just basically the energy level. Absolutely. The energy level is so high. I mean, you're yelling, it you're can't clapping be anything your hands. Else. It's, it's, it's the, the energy. energy. Yes. You know what I mean? You're not you're not making any more shots in practice than you did before. You're not running better plays. It's the energy level. You know what I mean? You you might move a little bit faster. You know what I mean? There's more talking. There's more engaging. Like because you feel it. You know that everybody's going to be watching this game. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I think from that standpoint, that's probably what he was talking about. It's a it hard just place the to play to. Level. And like I said before, man, over six times, it's been six times this year that the Turpins have been down by double digits. Yeah. So even if that happens, we're fine. We're fine. You know, we weather the storm. Right. Weather the storm, just keep doing what we do. Shots will start to fall. You know, I, I'm I'm excited for a nail biter. It's gonna go down to the wire. I think it's you know it's gonna be a big time game. It's gonna be what it's built up to be. Right, and I'm telling you right now, that number one seed hey. in the in the NCAA tournament that might be out there for them. That might be. I mean, they've got they've got what seven more games left. Yeah, they got a chance to get a number one seed. I think right now they're picked to be number two seed. Yeah, I think that was what it was. But they're, you know, hot, right, they're hot right now. Right now, number two seed. Now is the time one to be hot. Might be out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, now is the time to be hot. This is when you want to be playing your best basketball for sure, and that's what they're doing. So Saturday is going to be a big one, man. I'm excited about it. I really am. I can't wait to see it. And you know, I know all Maryland Nation is going to be uh, watching that game and with the excitement that we have for it because they got a chance to, uh, you know, to get this one on the road. It'll be such a great win for them. Yeah, you know we'll be back to chop it up. Yeah, we'll talk about it next uh, next week. But uh, you know, let's hope we get one. Let's let's see hope we get see one. how our predictions go. Yeah, I got Maryland sixty eight, sixty two, sixty eight, sixty two. I'm gonna go to Delaware with that, man. You, okay, sixty eight, sixty two, sixty eight, sixty two. That's my prediction. There we go. I'm right. agree. I'm agree with you. All right. 